Howdy folks, welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. Just a quickie today because I'm still trying to get everything packed and ready for Comic Con at the Excel Centre in London, which I will be attending today and tomorrow. Nevertheless, it is a good one. It's another patch 9.15 replay featuring the Gorilla 15, the replacement for the Waffentrager E100. I did feature one of these Gorilla 15 replays in yesterday's World of Tanks video, but it's a new machine. We haven't seen an awful lot of it so far. And I must apologise, by the way, to Dan, who was driving the Gorilla 15 in yesterday's video, for calling him Chris all the way throughout the video, because I'm crap, and that's basically what I do. This is not Chris, and it's not Dan. This is Subdread. Subdread, in probably one of the first games he's played in this machine, here on the Steps match. Unfortunately, Subdread appears to have a couple of anger issues. Um, he must be using XVM and is not too impressed with the stats of some of his teammates and is being quite vocal about it at the beginning of the battle. Subdread, I, I appreciate that it can be frustrating if you're constantly being matched up with players who couldn't tell the difference between their arse and their elbow in the dark without the help of a map, a flashlight and a written instructions. But yelling at them ain't going to make them play any better. All that's going to happen is they're going to report you for being a git, and you're going to end up with a suspension, so try to chill out. Anyway, match on. His first shot fired at a likely camping position in the bushes at the other end of the steps here. Second shot shaved half the health off a T-30 advancing right across the middle of the steps, and that one didn't even land in the sun. 0.27 accuracy on this thing, by the way. Did you see the amount of deviation on that shot at the T-34 there? It actually went into his tracks. Aimed at the centre of the hull with 0.27 accuracy. Second shot didn't though, there's his first kill. Now you'll note that this is in counter on steps. So what all of his team are doing over at the western end of the map, I have no idea. Although to be fair, most of the enemy team are over there as well. All but three of his team and most of the enemy team are all fighting as far away from the objective in an encounter battle on steps as they can possibly be and still be on the same map. Now, somebody's got to go and fight over there, otherwise the team ends up getting outflanked, but that's two-thirds of the team. So you can kind of understand his frustration with his team here, even if you can't necessarily condone it. Now, the three tanks that are contesting the camp, it looked pretty good at first. There was only one enemy tank down there. But, well, he's not as alone as we may first have been led to imagine. And so, the three guys on the team that did go to contest the cap are kind of getting a bit of a spanking. What is that Tiger 2 doing? Do you not know there are tier 10 tank destroyers in this game? Why would... What? Well, yeah, anyway. As far as the actual scores are going, it's not that bad. They're only losing 3-4. Subdread's just been spotted, and that is an SU-12254 over there. Very, very dangerous tier 9 tank destroyer. Let's see if he can't hit him. Where did he go? There he is. And a very, very useful hit. Unfortunately, that tank destroyer down there is in the perfect position, with his gun loaded and aimed in this direction, to prevent Subdread from actually getting down there and assisting his teammates in the cat. Then again, well, that really isn't such an issue anymore because there isn't anybody on his team left in the cap for him to get down there and assist. There's just that Skoda T-50 down there who is fast retreating with enemy tanks in hot pursuit, enemy T-54E1 and the Type 61 are soon going to be coming. Oh, and there's the Type 61. Stops to kill the T-50. There's no way you're going to back out in time. The Gorilla 15 has a 1.5 second aim time on this 150mm gun. If it gets to point the gun at you at that kind of range, you're going to take a spanking. Of course, there's still that SU-12254. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's missed. And... Well, it was a lot of damage by another tank standards, but that was a below average damage roll for the Gorilla 15's 150mm gun, so naturally the SU-12254 survives. Did you see him trying to angle his armour and bounce the shot there? Now, you might be sitting here laughing at this point, thinking, <laughs> I mean, the Gorilla 15's got 279 millimeters of penetration. No amount of angling is ever going to bounce a shot from that. Well, you'd be surprised, because he does actually manage to do it on his next shot. What's this? Actually, there's a couple of amusing things happen here. Watch this. Ding! He just bounced a shot from the SU-122. He only has 30 millimeters of armor. And any second now, you see the SU-12254 trying to angle the armor. He's actually going to take this on the side, where the armor's even weaker, and ding! Bounced clean off. 
That was a high explosive shell as well, by the way. <laughs> um, remember, high explosive will always explode and do some damage if it hits the target. Yeah, bullshit. Anyway, surely he, they're fine, fantastic. Finally got him. I have to admit, with the amount of shots he put in the direction of the SU-12254 there, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, for God's sake, just get down there and reset the cap and take the hit. But, well, he's done it. He's got plenty of time. T-54 he won there in the cap circle somewhere. There he is. 1.5 second aiming time. Yep, you're dead too. So, oh, somebody else on this team just managed to kill something. The scores are now... Well, they're not as bad as they were. At one point, two-thirds of his team were dead. And they only managed to kill five enemies. I've seen worse than this. This is entirely winnable. It's only a two kill difference between the two teams. And more importantly, all the enemy team are all the way over on the other end of the map, and nowhere near the cap circle. And Subdread is. Of course, when the enemy team have got T-54 lightweights, Type 61s, SU-101s, there's no way you're going to win by capping in a tank destroyer like this. So instead, he starts moving from concealment to concealment to get it in position to take sniping shots at members of the enemy team who might possibly be coming in this direction in an attempt to actually win, like the Lerva. But of course he gets spotted and takes a hit. And all it does is blow his tracks off. It was the return shot from the Lerva that failed to penetrate. A 105mm cannon shell from a tier 8 heavy tank failed to penetrate his tracks and 16mm of side armour. <laughs> Well, of course it didn't. The other thing about the Grilla 15, which didn't really come across in yesterday's replay... Oh, hang on, just going to stop and assassinate this enemy Grilla 15, and there's kill number 5. But yes, the other thing about the Grilla 15 that didn't really come across in yesterday's video is just how fast this thing is. Now, it doesn't turn very well. It's, it's a lot like the Hellcat in that respect, which is blisteringly quick, but there's a turning circle the size of the state of Wyoming. But this thing has a power weight ratio of 22 horsepower per tonne, which is better than most medium tanks. And we'll just stop to assassinate the Lerva. By the way, before he put that shot into the Lerva, he was the last tank on his team against five enemies. So, potential Collar Banoffs medal coming up. But yes, very, very fast in a straight line as well. It has a top speed of 60 kilometers per hour. Combine that with that 22.5 horsepower per tonne power weight ratio makes this an incredibly mobile little tank destroyer. You see, the thing I always found faintly ridiculous about the Waffentrager E100 is that you've basically got this E100 hull, which is big, heavy, not particularly fast, reasonably well armoured. But then on top of it, you stick a gun shield, which only has, I can't remember the exact number, something like 20 or 40 millimetres of armour. You've basically got an E100 with a Panzer 1C turret on top, <laughs> and so what's the point? Well, obviously the thing had to have some kind of weaknesses, but you've got no stealth, you've got no mobility, and you've effectively got no armour, because it's not like you can go hold down on the turret, is it? And there's kill number seven. It would be real nice if this enemy team would all come at him one at a time, you know, just to give him time to reload and get ready for them. Surely they're not going to be that stupid. Well, I think they are. <laughs> kill number eight. Two to go. But yes. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. Oh, oh, he missed her! <laughs> and some dread's got a turret, and he hasn't, so... Kill number nine. Uh, or is it ten? No, it is nine. Just one more to go, and it's only an IS-3, and he still pretty much has all of his health. But going back to the Gorilla 15, replacing the Waffentrager E100, if you take that autoloader away... The Waffentrager E100 would have been the worst machine in the game, because it's got no stealth, it's got no mobility, and with that flimsy gun shield on top of the tank, it's got no armour either. So, oh, there's the IS-3, and, yeah, I think I'm seeing a pattern emerging here. His, his tracks ate the shot. <laughs> I'm not saying Subdread has played badly. He definitely hasn't. He's played very, very well indeed. But he's been pretty lucky too. I'm just saying, he's in a machine that's only got 30 millimetres of armour at the most. I mean, it's got the kind of armour to make a tier 3 light tank look embarrassed, <laughs> and he's been hit in a tier 10 match. What, five times? And he's only taken damage once. You lucky bastard. <laughs> that IS-3's got to be sweating bullets though. Look at the damage. You don't want to be trading shots with this thing. I mean, 30 millimetres of armour or not, and the IS-3 has actually managed to damage him this time, so well done. It's hit him twice, damaged him once. It's those shell-eating tracks, isn't it? 
Maybe that's it. Maybe the Gorilla 15 was actually built from salvaged Russian tanks. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps the tracks are salvaged from IS-3s and Game E4s. Because that would make a lot of sense, certainly in the context of what I've seen happen so far in this particular replay. You know what those Russian heavy tank tracks are like? They're like shell magnets. It's impossible to score a hit on the side of a Russian heavy tank, providing the tracks are still up. And finally, there we go. Shot from the front, so he's not going to hit the tracks of the IS-3. <laughs> Kill number 10, Pool's medal, Kolobanov's medal, over 8,000 damage done. Sub-dread in the Gorilla 15. The replacement for the Waffentrager E100, which was removed from World of Tanks in patch 9.15 a couple of days ago, and it does seem to make sense as a replacement for the Waffentrager E100, because if you take away that autoloader gun, well, the Waffentrager E100 had nothing. It didn't have armor, it didn't have speed, it didn't have mobility, and it didn't have concealment. So you've got to give some of those things to the replacement if it's not going to have that monster autoloader. And they seem to have gone for the mobility, definitely, and possibly also the stealth. And so it seems to work as a very, very capable tank destroyer at Tier 10. I've certainly seen people doing very, very well in this thing, indeed, autoloader or not. Anyway, that's it for today, folks. Today I am at the first day of MCM London Comic Con at the Excel Centre at Victoria Docks in London. I'll be there tomorrow on Saturday as well, but this is the last you'll see of me. Until Miggles with Jingles on Monday. So enjoy your weekend, take care, and I'll catch you next time.